Hey everyone, Ben Bellack here, Beverly Hills Super Realtor, taking you behind the gates for this special edition of Historic Homes Los Angeles. This week, we find ourselves at the now former home of conservative political commentator Ben Shapiro. Now, if you love what he has to say or maybe not so love what he has to say, I think you'll agree by the end of this tour, this house is pretty incredible. We are on nearly two thirds of an acre on park-like grounds in historic Valley Village in the southeastern corner of the San Fernando Valley, which is steeped in Hollywood pedigree and history. In fact, this property was just designated a historic landmark, which means you can't tear it down. It's all on one level. It's pretty incredible. This is actually one of my favorite houses. Let's take a look, you're gonna love it. moment you step through the front door, it's maximum drama. We have these pitch ceilings with skylights so light pours in. There's all these original exposed wood beams and the centerpiece of this great entertaining room is a fireplace that's probably four and a half feet. So all these incredible nods to original style and architecture below our feet are these wider plank wood floors and you can see the pegs, which is the older style with which they used to attach the floor to the subfloor. And what I love is, is while it's formal in design, it still feels very connected. Most traditional architectural styles really do lean into formal entry. Every room truly feels separate from the other. But if you look around this room from any vantage point, you can see one, two, three, four, five, and six, if you include the front door, accesses into outdoor spaces, the office, the master, uh, a den, the formal dining. I can actually see the kitchen here and there. It really is a California take on a formal style, which accommodates entertaining, uh, and really family living. You know, everyone's not so separate from each other. Let's take a look at the formal dining room. Stepping through this widened door opening here, what a dramatic dining room. We have a statement piece of a chandelier light fixture suspended above more exposed wood, a statement piece of a fireplace over my shoulder, a wet bar, I mean, this is the kind of place that is so sexy at dusk. Candles lit, super dim lighting in here and glowy with the kind of the wood crackling in the fireplace. I mean, this really reminds me of where I grew up or like when you go on that ski trip and you're all kind of cuddled up in front of the fire. I know guys, it's getting weird, but vibe with me here. This place is incredible. Let's take a look at the kitchen, shall we? Historic home, sure. Modern kitchen, yes. And I love a giant center island for everyone to congregate. And this kitchen is fully equipped. We have two sub-zero fridges and freezers, an oversized wolf range with eight burner stovetop, three sinks, a ton of storage, two dishwashers, and did I mention a little bit of wine storage? Anyway, why don't we take a step through the den to check out the master suite. Mm -hmm. 
One of the challenges with buying an older home is that oftentimes the bedrooms are on the small side, which is just not the case here. As you can see in the master suite, it's adorned with all of the original architectural details that we see throughout the house, all over this fireplace, as well as the beam ceilings and hardware holding up the window treatments. It's a lot to like here. Let's take a look at the office. It's pretty crazy. Now that we're situated in this incredible office space, I think it's an appropriate time to talk about some of the history of this great property where allegedly Judy Garland had her sweet 16. Lewis Stone was the highest paid actor in Hollywood when he built this house and he moved over into this neighborhood to get out of the limelight. He was a huge MGM star but didn't understand the craziness for people wanting autographs. He came from the silent film era, although he had a very successful run toward the end of his career as Judge Hardy in the Andy Hardy series. There was a hundred piece orchestra in the living room to record Voyage to the Bottom of Sea theme when Paul Sautel lived here. Past owners feel that a few celebrity ghosts still live here and that Clark Gable visited a few times. And Lewis Stone's houseman is rumored to still be living in the dining room. The caretaker's house, stable, and chauffeur's quarters are behind the house to the north side on Cortine. And originally the property went almost to Laurel Canyon. Pretty deep rooted Hollywood history, right? And I have been holding back a very interesting surprise feature of this house, but this would not be an LA home tour without a closer look outside. Let's head out, shall we? So as we head out to the pool, we get to step through this drought resistant garden, which kind of makes for the perfect place for a child to run around and pretend or a dog to run around this fully gated property. As you can see, the trees all over the property are towering and surrounding me now are these incredible mature agave plants. Look at this, all of this mature landscaping growing over these kind of wooden gateways outside. Pretty special, nice serene place to write up some conservative driven articles for the Daily Wire and, and for Fox News. <laughs> Let's take a look at the pool. A true Spanish revival hacienda on nearly two thirds of an acre across six bedrooms and five bathrooms in nearly 6,000 square feet. As always, I did promise a surprise at the end and in maybe some random nature to the property and maybe a little bit off brand, uh, I take you and welcome you to a tiki bar. I'm starting to notice a theme that we're always ending these tours in a bar or some sort of alcohol setting, which I think has nothing to do with the trials and tribulations of being a real estate agent in Los Angeles. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Historic Homes Los Angeles. I certainly did. Frankly, I love this home. Don't forget to like and comment below. And we, of course, hope you'll subscribe. In the meantime, we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.